Ok, Spencer Welt from Canada. Welcome to Canto do Zero. Uh! <risos> Obrigado. Esta é. vidinha é mais ou menos. <risos> I know that you know many, many words in Portuguese. Am I All right? The bad ones. <risos> the bad ones. Who teach? Who teach you? Thanks, thanks to, to whom? <risos> Just a few swear words in, oh, in Portuguese. Just I know what not to say when I'm there, right? Yes. Yeah, yes, yes, and, yes. And all the good foods, I yes. know how to order there, the pau de queso and all of that stuff. So Churrascaria. Oh, now you're going to make me mm, <laughs> drool a little bit. Oh, I miss Brazil. Yes. So, guys, Spencer is my... Uh, teacher, my mentor in the last 12 years, my friend. Back in those days there in uh, Buenos Aires. Buenos well. Aires. And, uh, and Spencer uh, is a very important uh, voice teacher, uh, vocal coach, anything that you want. Spencer is a very, very good singing teacher my friends so spencer tell us your beginning you are engineer or something or just musician <laughs> uh i started um as a musician when i was a child and then i got into um bands and then i started to get hired by different bands to play keyboards and to sing background vocals. Um, and so I was doing music professionally. I didn't quit school, but professionally to some degree since about age 16 or so uh, is when I got my start. Oh. We are. Hi. Eh. We're back again. <laughs> We're back again. We're back. Awesome. Yes. So, and then th that's, that's your beginning, right? Yeah. So then that's how uh, I got my start in singing. And I looked at myself mostly as an instrumentalist who um, would also sing. Uh, but then I saw that I was getting hired more and more for my ability to sing because people would say, well, you know, I know 10 people that play the piano, but you're the only guy who can sing harmonies really well uh, and play the piano. So you get the job. Um, and so then that made me start to pursue this singing thing because I always saw myself as not really a singer, uh, that I was an instrumentalist. But then I started to see Well, you know, um, I think there's some demand for this singing thing. And uh, I started to work on my singing. And then I started to get out from behind the piano and started to sing uh, solos, sing lead uh, in different bands and different projects, which uh, on one hand, you get better at singing doing that, just gaining experience being in front of a crowd and having to sing a song, but you also start to get to know really quickly your own uh, limitations as a singer. You start to see that, oh, when I get to that part of my voice, I can either go, ha, or ha, but nothing in between the two. And so then I would get hired to come into the studio to sing background vocals on, on a project. And they'd say, okay, we want you to sing a G sharp here, but not too loud. And I'm like, well, you know, I can give you A or I can give you B. I can give you ha or ha. And, and yet I knew that my heroes of singing, Stevie Wonder, Luther Vandross, Brian McKnight, I knew that they consistently sang in those ranges with all kinds of dynamics and expression and flexibility um, so that it wasn't just zero or one, on or off, but there was all of this 
analog in between all of these different shades of expression and of um, of dynamics, and I wanted that. <laughs> yeah, same here. Same the same the same story here. So, and then you you got a teacher, or it was not so easy for you to to develop this part of your voice in the middle. Yeah. Well, I got teachers that I hoped would help me <laughs> and they were trying to help me but honestly I did not find a teacher who really could help me with that aspect they did help me with some other things but nobody that could really help me with that middle area uh, what we call mix voice for about 10 years of trying to find teachers I had some teachers that could sing in mixed voice and that knew that it was an important thing for a singer to be able to do. <clears throat> so they were encouraging it <clears throat> um, for head voice. They were trying to teach me. Uh, but one of my teachers, after working with me for probably about a year, said, well, Spencer, maybe you don't have a head voice. To which I said, but I have a head. <laughs> so, and I and I have voice. That's it. I have a voice. I have a head. You know, I'm not decapitated. Um, <laughs> and you know, since then we've learned that head voice is not really created in the head. Yeah. But I say all of that to say that the teacher was blaming me to a degree for his or her inability to show me how to do this skill. Um, uh, uh, I think a lot of times teachers are quick to put their insecurities on the student. And so if the student can't do something and the teacher tries their limited uh, teaching skills curriculum, on the student and the student still can't do it, then they blame the student, you're not talented, maybe you should stop singing, maybe this is not for you. And so then often teachers will just surround themselves with students that have a natural ability toward doing this. Students that possibly would have learned how to do this on their own. But the teacher says something not very helpful, like put it, put it out your forehead, sing it through your eyes, which is so um, subjective. Uh, it, it's it's not precise. It's yeah. very vague. It will make some people maybe go, oh, I think I know what you're talking about, and then they will find it naturally, and others will get worse with that advice. And then everyone in the middle will just be confused um, by that because it's not objective. It's not a tool that can has a cause and an effect behind it, which is what I try and teach from is rather than describing my fluffy little thoughts and feelings and expecting that you're going to be the same kind of person as me and understand, read my mind and read my sensations and be able to copy me, I try and use tools that are objective that stand outside of you and I, like language, that can help <clears throat> to produce an effect in the student. And so these teachers, they were not bad people. They really wanted to help me. They were just limited in their ability to help because they were stuck in um, kind of old fashioned um, ways of teaching, like just support. And if there's something wrong with your high note, it must be something wrong with your singing and placement. Try and put the sound all over your body as if we have that control. You know, it would be as silly as me saying to you, okay, Hafa, I want you to clap 
in your studio, but send the sound of the clap only into that corner over there of the room, nowhere else, because you have control over physics. You know, you are the mini god of physics now. And so <laughs> your clap sounds only can be directed in that direction over there. And um, so all of that to say that it, it took a lot of searching and a lot of frustration for me to finally find a teacher that could show me what my head voice was, could show me what mixed voice was. It wasn't magic. It didn't, <clears throat> I didn't build a strong, flexible, easy connection into my high notes overnight, but at least it gave me hope. <laughs> it's like, yes. hey, at the end of this tunnel, there is light and you're going to have to practice and you have a lot of bad habits and you're going to have to work hard, but you will get there because thousands of other people have gone through this process and have gotten to the other side of this instead of, hey, take this advice that's very, very vague and very um, uh, 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 not objective, it's subjective. You know, it's how I'm feeling as a teacher. And um, maybe by chance you will land on the right thing. Maybe you'll get worse. <laughs> yes. So Spencer, yeah. how long was this, this training for or this searching, this journey for you to get your mixed voice? Oh yeah. Great. You know, within one lesson, I felt something different. Within one lesson, I felt what my head voice was as being different than falsetto. And I felt that there was something in the middle that sometimes, because I had some natural talent as a singer, I had sung with a mixed voice that was tight that was apretado, mm -hmm. that was pressurized, you know? But I could do some of that. And so I recognized some of that in the very first lesson. But then to be able to then undo my bad habits, build up good habits and break down bad habits and bad muscle coordinations, um, that was a few years, especially to get to the point of being able to sing a song um, in this newer area of my voice. You know, it's like um, I tell students, um, you've been using this hand and your, your other hand for your whole life. You know how that hand works. But imagine I tell you now, from today, we're going to transplant another arm onto your back. So now you have three hands, but that third hand you've never used in your life. How, um, how coordinated are you going to be to you know, pick up the keys, to drive the car, to drink some water? You're, it's, it's like a baby. You're relearning everything again with this new yes. uh, part of your body. <clears throat> now, you're developing mixed voice and head voice, and you've never used this before, maybe. Um, in my case, I had used mostly chest voice, some very tight, heavy kind of mixed voice, and falsetto. So now I'm developing a third arm, <laughs> a, a, a third part of my voice, not chest, not just pure falsetto, but something in me in between a third voice. That's going to take a while because I've been singing with my chest voice since puberty and performing live for money since 16. So, you know, at my age, two or three years now. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so now I have to learn like a child from the beginning how to use yes. this new coordination. And that, it, it's not a miracle. It's not 
a pill that you take and like, oh, now you can sing high rock music really easy. Now you can sing R&B like Stevie Wonder really easy because I've shown you my secret. It, it, it is a training method. And if I want big muscles, I don't go to the gym and at the end of one session, look to my personal trainer and say, why don't I have big muscles? I want a refund. You know, we all know it's going to take time and, and training and um, being consistent. But we all know that if we lift weights, we, the muscles will grow. If we go running, swimming every day, um, we'll get in better uh, conditioning. If we practice specific vocal exercises that are designed to help us, not just anyone, not just an exercise off of the internet that might make you worse because maybe it wasn't right for you, but if you're doing the things that are right for you and you're doing them consistently, your voice is going to get more conditioned it's going to become easier and you will <clears throat> gain strength and flexibility um, uh, as you practice that. And so for me, I think it was probably three or four years later, uh, I was already teaching voice and I could sing uh, in a mix in a song if I really thought about it, if I was focused, if I did all the right things and I did all the things my teacher was telling me, I, I could do it. But I remember walking home from my studio and just singing something for fun. And all of a sudden, you know, is it you lovely? And all of a sudden, like, oh, I'm singing in a mix for fun. Not because I have a teacher saying, no, you better sing in a mix. Or not because as a teacher, I'm thinking, oh, I better be a good teacher be a good example and narrow that vowel. And it wasn't any of that. It was just for the pure enjoyment of making sound and of singing. I was enjoying mixed voice. And to me, that was like turning a page in the book yeah. of going from something that I was working on doing and could do when I was focused on it. Um, to something that was becoming automatic in my body and becoming a good habit um, and and something that was now unconscious instead of something that I consciously had to. And, and those are the stages for a student when they're developing. Yeah, yeah. Because we understand the concepts here in our brain, but not here because our our <laughs> muscles they don't have a brain inside the muscles that's they, right it take, takes time it lot, takes time and, and then those muscles depending on our um experience of singing those muscles may have been programmed to do the opposite the opposite of now what we want them to do and so those muscles say Oh, you want to sing that note? This is how we sing that note. And unless you tell me different, or unless you put a tool along with that to change how I'm going to respond to that, your muscles go, we sing that ah, like that, or we sing that oh, or whatever. But um, yes, to, to do something new is, um, is, is motor learning. It's to not just change your mind about something, but then your mind and the connection of your mind to your body starts to change um, how those um, techniques and how those skills are activated. Yeah, it require, requires lots of training, muscle training. In my case, it was the same. The same thing, mm. bad habits, <laughs> right? You know. Yeah, yeah. You had, when I met you, you had um, some some great things happening going into that first passage. Um, sometimes a little, sometimes a little difficult. Maybe sometimes a little bit heavy. 
Um, but then um, that would sometimes then stop you from getting into your second passage into the higher part of your voice. And so, you know, that's what I've seen that you've done such great work to develop this easy connection into even the second passage of your voice. And, you know, because as teachers, we typically have our own struggles with our voice that makes us better teachers because we then can empathize yes. with our students when they say, this is difficult, I'm struggling. And we can go, yes, I know what you mean. You know, I used to seek out those singing teachers or just musicians in general who were incredible musicians, who were the top piano players. I'm from Vancouver, in Vancouver or whatever, and go, I need to go take lessons with them. They're incredible. And sometimes they were a good teacher, but sometimes because all of this came to them so naturally and they, it's not that they didn't work and that they didn't practice and that they didn't study, but their way of absorbing music and information is so personal that they don't know how to teach someone else how to do what they do. Yes. To them, it's organic and they just, it, they just absorbed it from life, from, you know, from a child. And so they um, often don't know, they will just, again, describe to you their thought process, how they work, how they think. And I remember, you know, some of my teachers looking at them and just going like, like, I don't understand the words coming out of your mouth. Um, because some of these things had not come naturally to me. And so I you know, found it interesting that that's how they describe things, but it was not helping me to become better at my instrument, whether that was singing or piano or guitar or what have you. And so often I've learned the most from teachers that are highly skilled, um, but have had to work for all that they have. Um, there was not as much natural talent or natural feeling for things. If they are good now, it's because they worked for every bit of that. And so then they understand that students think different from them and from each other. And so you can't teach every student, listen, Lesson one is this. Lesson one is breathing. Lesson two is posture. Lesson three is <laughs> is placement. Lesson four is, it, you know, lesson four is chest voice. Maybe, uh, it you know, it 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 becomes personal and personalized to every single student. We have to start from their perspective. Start with where they are and what is the thing that will make the biggest difference in their life and in their instrument today. And then we design a path from there, but it may not be starting from the same place that the student before them or the student after them is. Uh, it's, it, you know, it'll be a personalized, customized path for every one of them because especially with the voice, we have such different tendencies uh, and this is what, um, when I'm putting out a video on YouTube or, or, or doing a course or teaching online or, or, or even just writing something on Instagram that's just a, a tip, I always try and keep in mind who will this help, but also who might take this information and twist it or wrong or take it wrong and and it might cause their journey to take even longer. And so, you know, I can't be responsible for everyone in the world and what they do with what I say and record, but I also take that as a very, uh, I, I, I take it as an honor to be able to speak to people. And I also take that as a responsibility to speak responsibly and to not put information out there that could could easily be misunderstood 
and that could easily cause someone damage or pain uh, 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 in their singing, especially. You know? Yeah, I agree, hundred <clears throat> percent. So, Spencer, let's talk about your your job in the last few years, maybe uh, five or six, six or seven years. Yeah, uh, well, in, I, in IVA. Yeah, IVA is seven years now. Seven years, yeah. So, uh, yeah, IVA stands for Institute of Vocal Advancement or for, for Vocal Advancement. Um, and, and so it's a company for teacher training, singing teacher training. And so I'm one of the master teachers for that. And that means that before the pandemic, I was traveling to uh, many, many different countries and continents. I've, 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 I've taught... Include, including Bra Brazil twice, Bra right? Brazil, yeah. I think I've, I've gone to Brazil three times now, Three maybe? times? <clears throat> yes. Maybe two times doing education, one time just for fun. Yes, um, for fun. But uh, 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 that's why I love going to Brazil to teach. And, uh, and so I would um, do master classes for the public, but also then teacher training classes for IVA teachers, singing teachers that um, want to uh, build up and uh, 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 improve their skill as a teacher, their understanding, but not just like you can read books, you can watch videos, there's great information online, but we focus on especially the hands-on practical training of teachers so that they don't just have a lot of knowledge in their head about how the voice works, but they have practical tools um, and um, lesson plans to be able to help students, their students, to, to grow and to improve. And so we are over 26 countries in the world I think we're in and um, so it's it's great because I can do uh, we do a lot of online training um, you know if if it's safe to travel we do some traveling also to different uh, continents and countries and um, so it's a it's a fabulous community of teachers that are sharing information and knowledge amongst themselves and all of them, uh, you know, are continuing their training. I think that's something for all of us as students to be studying with the teacher who is also still studying. So, yes. and that's, you know, when I think of myself as a teacher, <clears throat> I always want to be learning more and growing and expanding and then giving of that to my students and, and otherwise, I'm going to get a little stale. You know, um, I remember some of my teachers many, many years ago were teaching information that was outdated. It had been proved wrong. If, if it was something scientific or anatomical, some of these things are still a little bit of a mystery or they're being researched, but some things we know as science. And they were still teaching something that was 50 or 60 years old uh, <clears throat> and had been um, had been proven wrong since then. But they were still teaching it because they were not continuing their process of learning and development um, for themselves. Sure, and sure. Uh, so I think that that's important for every single teacher to be and for every single student to look for in a teacher is is this teacher uh, able to do what they're asking you to do? You know, yeah, yeah. I'm not a world-class singer. Uh, I probably would be, you know, uh, on tour with Usher or something if that was happening. <laughs> but, um, but I work to be able to do what I ask my students to do. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's important. Yeah. Yes. So, 
Uh, guys, if you want to be better uh, singing teachers, come to IVA to be Spencer's uh, student. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll have fun, hey? We have yes. fun. <laughs> come, to, come to IVA, guys. Yeah. So, Spencer, thank you for your time with us. Thank you for your patience, your thoughts. Uh, and then tell us how can I, how can we get your your website or your channel? Perfect, perfect. Uh, so my website is spencerwelch.com and uh, you can read more about me and book lessons on there and the book now site. Uh, and then Instagram and Facebook is at Spencer Welch Studio. Um, my YouTube channel is Spencer Welch Vocal Studio. Um, so youtube.com slash Spencer Welch Vocal Studio. And um, yeah, would love to hear from people, would love to, uh, you know, just drop by and say hi. And um, I, sp I don't speak, I speak very little Porto, but I speak Spanish. So yes. you know, between Spanish and English, you know, we can find a way to communicate, yeah. um, you know, or if it's just, you know, cheers, you know, yeah. good enough, right? Você pode falar em português e o Spencer pode responder em Spanish, right? Sim, sí, sim, sí, sim. Sí. Eu vou sí. responder em espanhol. E tu me <risos> podes falar em português. <risos> em português, devagarzinho, very, very slow, <risos> slowly, very slow, yeah. slowly. You know, yeah. the first time I went to Brazil, all I did was speak in Spanish with what I thought was a Portuguese accent. So I'd say... Yo, yo creo que el sol va a estar mañana. ¿Tú crees que va a haber sol mañana aquí? And the taxi drivers would be like, oh, you speak such good Portuguese. And I'm thinking, he just wants a tip is what he wants. Right? Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm terrible at this. But I just thought, if I speak with kind of a Portuguese accent, that they'll understand my Spanish. Trying to do something kind of a very mojo or wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so very funny. So, Spencer, thank you, my friend. Hugs for your family. Yes. And for yours. Thank you. And I'll see you in another day. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we'll chat soon. Maybe in Marizias one day. Marizias. Bye bye. See ya. Bye. Ciao. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>